pure corn is costing you money, and I can prove it in the next eight minutes. I spent six months testing this custom grain mix against traditional corn-based rations on two identical groups of steers, and the weight gain difference was almost 25%. 25%! Every single rancher feeding straight corn told me I was wrong until they saw the data. Here's what's actually happening in your cattle's rumen that the grain companies don't want you to know. Corn alone creates an acidic environment that actually slows down fattening after week three. But this specific grain combination balances the pH while maximizing energy conversion. And when you see the cost breakdown per pound gained, let me show you exactly what happens inside your steer's digestive system when you feed pure corn. Most ranchers think corn is the ultimate energy source, and they're half right. Corn is packed with starch, about 72%, which sounds great on paper. But here's the problem nobody talks about. When that much starch hits the rumen all at once, the bacteria that break it down produce massive amounts of lactic acid. This drops the pH from a healthy 6.5 down to 5.5 or even lower. And here's what that means for your wallet. At that low pH, the beneficial fiber digesting bacteria start dying off. The ones that help your cattle extract nutrients from forage, from hay, from everything else they eat, they're gone. Now your expensive corn is actually making the rest of your feed program worthless. But wait, it gets worse. That acidic environment damages the rumen wall itself, causing inflammation, reducing nutrient absorption, and in severe cases, leading to acidosis. I've seen ranchers lose animals to this, and they never understood why. They thought they were giving their cattle the best, the highest energy feed available, pure yellow corn. Meanwhile, their steers were literally suffering from indigestion that was costing them pounds every single day. So what's the solution? This is where the grain mix comes in, and trust me, the simplicity of this is going to surprise you. The mix I tested uses 40% corn, yes, we're keeping corn in the equation, 30% barley, 20% oats, and 10% wheat. Now, before you think this sounds complicated or expensive, let me break down why each ingredient matters and how this combination creates something way more powerful than corn alone. Barley ferments slower than corn. This is critical. While corn dumps all its energy in the first two hours, barley releases it gradually over four to six hours. This means your cattle maintain steady energy levels throughout the day instead of spiking and crashing. Oats bring something completely different to the table, fiber. They have about 12% fiber compared to corn's 3%, and this fiber acts like a buffer in the rumen, literally soaking up excess acid and keeping that pH stable. And wheat? Wheat has the highest protein content of these four grains, around 14%, which supports muscle development and overall growth in a way that corn's 8% protein simply cannot match. Here's what happened in my test. Group A got pure corn, 3% of body weight daily, the standard recommendation you'll find anywhere. Group B got the 40-30-20-10 mix at the same feeding rate. Both groups were Angus cross steers, similar starting weights, same pasture, same water source, same everything. The only variable was the grain. After 90 days, Group A on pure corn gained an average of 2.1 pounds per day. Respectable, right? That's what most ranchers expect and accept. Group B on the mix gained 2.6 pounds per day. Do the math over 90 days, that's 45 extra pounds per head. On a pen of 20 steers, that's 900 pounds more beef to sell. But here's where it gets really interesting, and this is the part that made me question everything I thought I knew about cattle nutrition. The feed conversion ratio was dramatically different. Group A needed 8.2 pounds of corn to produce one pound of gain. Group B needed only 6.8 pounds of the mix per pound of gain. Let that sink in for a moment. You're feeding less total grain and getting more beef. How is that possible? It all comes back to rumen health and pH balance. When the rumen environment stays in that sweet spot between 6.2 and 6.8, several magical things happen simultaneously. The fiber digesting bacteria thrive, meaning your cattle extract more nutrition from your forage program. The starch digesting bacteria work efficiently without producing toxic levels of acid.
the rumen wall stays healthy and absorbs nutrients at maximum capacity. And the animal's overall immune system stays strong because they're not fighting constant low-level inflammation. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Isn't this mix more expensive than straight corn? Won't I lose money buying four different grains instead of one? This is the most common objection I hear, and it's based on looking at the wrong numbers. Yes, per ton, this mix might cost you $10 to $15 more than pure corn, depending on your local grain prices. But you're feeding less of it per pound of gain, and you're gaining more pounds per animal. When I calculated the actual cost per pound of beef produced, the mix came out 12% cheaper than pure corn. 12% cheaper while being healthier for your animals. Here's the mistake I see constantly on farms and ranches everywhere. Producers buy the cheapest feed per ton without calculating the actual cost per pound of gain. It's like buying a truck based only on the sticker price without considering fuel economy or maintenance costs. A cheaper truck that breaks down constantly and guzzles diesel will cost you way more in the long run than a reliable, efficient model with a higher initial price. Feed works exactly the same way. Let me give you another real example. A rancher in my area was finishing 50 head annually on pure corn. His feed bill was running about $45,000 per year. After switching to the mix, his feed bill went up to $48,000. He almost switched back until we calculated his actual returns. His cattle were reaching finish weight 21 days faster and averaging 53 pounds heavier at sale. At current market prices, that translated to an extra $17,000 in revenue. So he spent $3,000 more to make $17,000 more. That's the kind of math that changes operations. Now, should everyone use this exact 40, 30, 20, 10 formula? Not necessarily, and this is important. Your ideal mix depends on several factors. What grains are available in your region and at what price? What's your current forage quality? Are you finishing cattle or growing stalkers? What breed are you running? Genetics matter in feed efficiency. However, the principle remains universal. A diverse grain mix will almost always outperform a single grain ration when it comes to rumen health, feed efficiency, and sustainable weight gain. Here's how to start implementing this on your operation without risking everything on an untested change. Take a small group, maybe 5 or 10 head, and run your own comparison test. Keep detailed records. Weigh your animals every two weeks. Track exactly how much feed each group consumes. Calculate your cost per pound of gain. Let the data tell you what works on your specific farm with your specific cattle and your specific grain costs. This isn't about blindly following what worked for me. It's about understanding the science and applying it intelligently to your unique situation. One more critical point before we wrap up. Transition slowly when changing feed. If you've been feeding straight corn and you suddenly switch to this mix, you're going to cause digestive upset. Take at least 10 to 14 days to transition, gradually increasing the new mix while decreasing the old ration. Your cattle's rumen bacteria need time to adjust to the new feed profile. Rush this process and you'll create the very problems we're trying to avoid. The biggest lesson from all of this testing, all this data, all these results? We've been sold a story about corn being the king of cattle feed for so long that we stopped questioning it. Corn is an excellent energy source, no doubt about it. But excellent doesn't mean optimal, and it definitely doesn't mean it should be fed alone. Your cattle's rumen is an incredibly complex ecosystem with billions of microorganisms that need diversity to function at their best. Feed diversity creates microbial diversity, which creates better health, better efficiency, and better profits. So here's my challenge to you. Try this mix or create your own custom blend based on these principles. Track your results honestly, and then come back here and tell me what happened. Drop a comment below sharing your experience, your questions, or even your skepticism. This community of ranchers learning together and sharing real-world results is how we all get better at this. If this information helped you see cattle feeding in a new way, hit that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow. We're here every week bringing you practical, science-based strategies that actually work in real operations, not just in research papers. 
Share this video with another rancher who's still dumping pure corn into their feed bunks. They'll thank you when they see their next weight tape results. We're building something special here, a community of producers who aren't afraid to question conventional wisdom and who care more about what actually works than what we've always done. That's how we grow better cattle and better operations. I'll see you in the next one.